Welcome back, it is Thursday and that means acting analysis for animators and today I'm going to take a look at episode 2 of Killing Eve. Can't wait to watch season 2, it's not out yet for me, I can't watch it yet, but right now let's dive into episode 2 of season 1, let's check it out. First up is this walk and this is just an example for contrast where you have a character that knows what she's doing, she's very confident while she has her arms down, it's very tense and very nervous, you can see how she's barely moving the head, you can see the rhythm, how there's a lot more up and down, she has a swing to her arms, much more relaxed compared to her who is stiff, she looks down, it's a stiff head, she doesn't quite know what is going on, and you can see this even from behind, where you have those quick little steps, again she doesn't know where she is, what she's doing, she looks around, and this is all serving the contrast of, and you can see this here if I go back, look at her shoulders, how they go back and forth in, in Y, if you're an animator here in Y, left, right, left, right, very relaxed, same thing here, here, you can see even though the arm is slightly cut off, even though you know I'm a fan of gestures and movements that are not completely in frame, but you can see that relaxed walk, you know, the steps, taking out the keys, it's all very relaxed. Whereas if we go back to her on this side here, looking around quick steps, much more contained. You can see this here too, in terms of contrast, how she trails and then has to kind of catch up and all those little fast little moves. Again, just contrasting your characters. If you do have two characters, think about how could you contrast them in terms of posing, in terms of movements, how fast they move. Just tell us something about how they feel so we know they're different. Unless, of course, the similarity of a character is you know, the, uh, the main point of the shot. Of course, there are always exceptions to all my examples, but if you have multiple characters, try to make them distinct and different if that's what the shot calls for. But think of it in terms of posing and movement and gestures and just how fast they move. Just everything that they do is based on how they feel, their emotional state, what happened before to them, or what they think is going to happen afterwards, their goals, their actions, all of that goes into your posing and your movement in terms of timing. Second example is this one where they talk and he wants to tell her something that, by now he tells her something that is not good news to her, so you can see that reaction here, and she doesn't really want to hear it. So he starts off with what he wants to say. I'm turning the sound back on so you can hear the interruption as he starts going and then you can see what she does. London was... <laughs> this is so good. All right, turn the sound off. So what I love about this is that you can have lip sync, like between her and him, they can both talk. It couldn't just be just one character, right? It could be a, a lip sync that's just for one character. And that character tells someone what they want of them, which is exactly this example. And this person doesn't want to hear it. Now you can do this with no interruption. So this is the length of your shot, no interruption in your lip sync. Or what you do is you have your character do something. And I'm also a fan of characters doing secondary actions, right? Where you can have your lip sync and your dialogue and interaction and everything, but the character is doing something while performing those lines. So now she can use this, since that's the setup of the scene there, she can use this to do this. So she interrupts the whole thing. You can put in artificial pause in your lip sync and in your dialogue and in the whole shot. And now what I love is that that look and this, that little like, yeah, 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 I did this, I don't want to hear this. And because you are artificially adding this and adding a break in the lip sync, now you have the option to do whatever you want acting wise. It's your creative freedom there and you can have that little look there. You can even go back to just a staring contest of the, and I love this. And I love that little look here. Just when we hear that the blender off screen is done, she has that little look of, oh, okay, I guess I'm done now. And it's so subtle. Or you have even a little bit little bit and the eyebrows launches again just watch your eyes little face it's very subtle and i love that quick little look as if she's happy again like oh i'm done and then he continues with the line but it's such a great moment of using secondary action using props to kind of change the shot if needed. I mean, in this case, obviously it's part of the scene. But again, if you have a scene where it's there's audio and you want to break it up, you want to kind of change this and not make it, you know, the kind of the same as the, the source, then maybe think about where could you place your characters? What's the environment? What are the props? What can you do to artificially add potentially a break where the characters have to stop? Now, of course, this is tricky if someone talks in the line that you suddenly pause and then it, fe it feels like you're hitting pause on the audio, so you have to kind of find a way, maybe maybe kind of edit the audio to make that work. I'm just saying this could be if it's possible for you to do that. An example of 
taking an audio piece and then really making it your own, changing it, changing the subtext, using the environments and using props to really make it your own and your own more creative and original interpretation of that audio piece. Next up is something else that's very subtle, but I love every single moment that she does here. So she puts on this mask, right? She, she concocts something that's not very healthy there. And this could just be something where you put on the mask and you think about constraints, you're thinking about you know, handling this. You probably have some spline controllers to do this and you're probably concentrating on intersections and all of that stuff, which is understandable and how this really folds around the head. This would be very, very tricky to do in animation. But what I love is what she does here. This, just that moment that even though she prepares something that's probably given a character very toxic, very lethal. She's preparing something where someone is going to die. It's very serious. And she has that moment of, oof, that's kind of kind of a pain to put that on. Just that moment of levity, of humor. And of course, you can do whatever you want to, but even in something like this, where it's very technical, where you, you interact with props, you can think about what could I do character-wise that makes it funny, sad, like whatever you want to do, but it gives us a little bit more of an insight into the character and it almost distracts from this overly technical aspect of animation where it's just really character driven. And I love that, just that little look, the widening of eyes, when to blink, and then she gets back. It's also just the contrast of that slow now, all right, hmm, okay, well, I'm ready. So good. And staying within the, the subtleties and breaking up of shots, here's something else. <laughs> She always cracks me up, sorry. Oh, uh, it cracks me up. So this is a line where she asks, can you do this for me as possible? And he, you know, he kind of says something, paraphrasing. Uh, you know, of course, everything is possible. I can do this for you. And he's kind of to impress her or just somewhat braggy. And she just, she's just not buying this, right? She has that look of, really, and you got that eye roll. It's great. Besides that, awesome, that, just that look is great. This is something else where, let's pretend this is your shop. And you got your two characters and the contrast of, you know, the visuals and everything standing, sitting. But it's a longer piece and you don't really want to have one long piece. Because as we go back, you can see it's a long, longer piece where they talk. So what could you do to break this up so it's not so potentially boring or just kind of static? If they say something that warrants a reaction, you could cut away to another character. And then this character could be, you know, if pretend that this audio piece is serious, then this moment could be the moment of comedy. Now, again, you don't want to copy exactly this shot, but you can think about, do I have a moment in my line where they say something where I can cut to someone else reacting to that line? And this could be with an eye roll, this could be with a laugh, this could be actually turning towards them because they're now suddenly interested. This could be them talking about something very important or about money, like a heist or something in a coffee place. And this is a person drinking coffee, overhearing the conversation going, what are they talking about? So you can kind of add interest with other characters that maybe heighten the stakes. You know, if they talk about a crime and this character is listening, that makes it potentially more interesting and dangerous that they're talking about this in the open, in the public with other people. So think about that too. If you have a longer shot, maybe there is a way to break it up and it doesn't have to be, you know, five shots and make this a whole sequence, but just a cutaway to character listening and reacting. It gives you the opportunity to do a lip sync, you know, all that performance that's tied to the lip sync and then cut away to a character listening and reacting where it's pantomime and it's not part of the audio at all. And again, you're bringing your own creativity and your own acting into a piece where usually with lip sync, you are tied to the length, to the inflections, to the rhythm. And again, you can just add your own things to it and potentially also do less lip sync if it's you know too much work where you cut away for a couple seconds. That's a couple seconds you don't have to do the lip sync and just the character listening and you know, eye darting and emoting, processing and looking around. And I think that could be really fun. And again, you can change the idea of the shot, the intensity of the shot. What do you want to do with or whoever you put into that cutaway into that second shot? potentially. But there you go. That's it for episode two. I don't want to go on more because the show in general is awesome. You should just watch the whole thing if you can. But if you think that this was cool and interesting and you want to use that in your shots, as always, I have workshops you can sign up. We can work together on implementing these kind of ideas into your shots to make your shots potentially even better. So let me know, email, comment, what do you want to do? Link in the description for all information regarding my workshops if you do want to sign up. Also, if you want to, you can subscribe and hit that bell button because I do upload almost every day. So if you want to get notified about all my uploads, feel free to subscribe if you want to. If you're still watching after my whole rambling ending, thank you very much. I appreciate it and I will see you in my next clip.